I can, yes. All right, let's give it another 45 seconds, Jennifer. And if it's just me and you, we'll make it a quick class. Again, there's a lot of exercises that I'm not going to make you do today because it's just, if it's not a lot of people in the class. But there's have you been to other night classes? Right I'm sorry. We have two more on right now with us on Zoom. I can see, see them. See if I can catch them. Not that I don't mind having all your attention, but I think. No, 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 fine. <laughs> who else do I? Who, who else is out there, guys? I Harry don't see. And who else? Alan. Good morning. Good morning, guys. How's everyone? Mm -mm. Hey, what's that, guy? Perfect. There you go. Now I got faces. Good morning, Sherry. How are you? Good. How are you? Uh, blessed every single day. Hope you are as well. I am. All right. So real quick, how long you been in the business, Sherry? <laughs> About three weeks. Oh, so you're a veteran. Perfect. Well, I, I like I, to hear I've that. I've been in real estate 18 years, but okay. I just switched to Keller Williams. Okay. Uh, so Where were you before? Uh, United Country Enders Realty in Withfield. Well, welcome home. Thank you. All right. So um, so we got a couple guys out. Real quick, my name is Greg Alexander. I am been an agent for the last 14, 15 months here at Keller Williams. Um, I am on the Mac Westland team. Uh, hey, brother. I uh, have a little history with real estate, a little quick story. So my uncle, my pop, you'll hear about him. If you come in the office, he is like the Atlanta grandfather to all the people here. Um, he's been doing real estate for 40 years and uh, begged me for 20 to get into it. And I was too settled and too stubborn to do it earlier. But uh, um, long story short, love what I do. I, uh, I jumped in both feet. Morning, Julie. Jumped in both feet and... Uh, I enjoy what I do now. You know, it's all about making relationships, uh, building relationships um, and doing that lead gen, putting the work in. And I tell you guys, you know, when I first got in this time last year, the market was completely different. You know, it was. Uh, it was busy, but you could make money pretty quickly back then. You know, it, now it's you. The, the agents putting in the work are the ones making a dollar bill right now. So I encourage you to use your success plan. Um, do your lead gen daily and hold yourself accountable, guys. It's all about accountability. So let's get started, guys. Can everybody see my screen still? Yes. All right. So again, welcome to night session 12, strengthening relationships. Um, again, you've I, my name is Greg. I'll be your facilitator today. I hope you learned something. Again, don't worry about muting yourself unless there's a bunch going on in the background with this map people on the ear. Just please speak up. If you have a question, let's let's just speak it. And let's talk to one another, okay? Well. All right. In se session 11, we discover the tools for converting leads into contacts and profitable business. Today is the third session of a lead follow-up. Strengthen relationships, which will extend your knowledge to include follow-up with contacts and explore the tools you can leverage to make follow-up systematic. Um, tell you what, guys, let's hear the ones that have been in real estate for more than a little bit. What's some of the success stories you guys have had in the past and how did you get to that? Just in general, in general, how did you, how did you, how did you get it to a transaction? How did you pick up a client? Give you some success stories. Uh, I do mine basically just uh, personal relationships. Okay. Uh, actually, 18 years with uh, you know, in country, I, I never, I bet probably got six, maybe six leads or contacts or okay. from the company. So you basically just have to uh, create those yourself. Okay. Um, you know, or, or I have. Now, I do say that the first night I was with Keller Williams, um, I got a referral from okay. an agent in Asheville. And nice. it, it's hopefully going to close. So 
Um, well, we're going to speak it to exist. It's it's, it's going to close. It's, we're going to we're going to think pot. It's going to close. Yeah, it's going to close. It's it's on the way. I hope, but um, I guess that sort of put me at peace a little bit that I did the right thing. You know. Gotcha. Well, I tell you, you know, I, it, and that that's definitely something to be successful and be proud of. You know, I, I definitely encourage you to celebrate any kind of progress at this point. You know, everything is a win. Sorry, guys. Due to you call, my my text was just going off. So yeah, you know, celebrate celebrate any kind of wins. Celebrate success. Um, talk about it. Be thankful for it. You know, and be and show gratitude for that. Okay. Sure. So to, we're going to uh, strengthen relationships today. So let's get started on that. This thing is right in my way. There we go. Today's agenda: establish the mindset, identify the goals. Dive, devise a plan, recap, and a highs and daily success system. Any questions so far, guys, before we get started? Nope. All right, go ahead and create a 36 to convert touch plan, design, and use the MOFR messages that generate <laughs> interest. Does anybody know what a MOFR is by chance? An M O F I R. Do you know what that acronym stands for? No, I don't. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's make offer for immediate response. Okay, so we'll learn about that today. Start thinking about what you will learn today. Let's consider what questions we might have and what we'd like to learn more about. All right. Let's see. Bear with me, guys. I will tell you, you know, we learn in Keller Williams to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. Well, you guys are seeing me very uncomfortable this morning. Teaching a class is not my thing. It's something I picked up this year. Try to to broaden my, my resume and to sharpen my skills as well. So you guys bear with me, okay? We'll work together on this, all right? So question, really broad question. What mindset do we need to adapt to successfully nurture relationships with contacts? No wrong answer here. What, what do you, what's the, what's the mindset you have to have? Give me some examples, guys. You have to be genuine. You have to, they're really, know these people okay and how do we get to know these people talk to them and ask questions um, develop a personal relationship with them that's right get to know their kids get to know their animals get to know what's going on around their around their life you know social media is a very easy way to get to know someone without having to get to know someone um do your research be a stalker not in a bad way but, uh, you know, use your tools you have. But, yeah, definitely asking questions, um, getting to know someone better, um, having, you know, a place where you, there's it's a reciprocal conversation back and forth. Um, that's where it all starts, okay? Let's say people work with agents who emotionally are emotionally to them in the strongest and the time they are ready to transact. Let's talk on that a second. So people are going to work with the agent that's, in their face, that they trust, and those can do a good job, right? So we have to make sure that we're reminding people that we're in the business because we're human. We forget things. So let them, let you know, make you be the person when they think about real estate, you're the first person that comes to their mind, okay? All right. Know that growth comes from clarity priorities, and focused action. Gary Keller and his writing team reminds us of the three things that lead to growth. The first two are thinking steps. First, we need to clarify around the goal and priorities. Then we get into action. So let's break that down. What does that mean to you guys? And yes, I, I, I make you guys answer questions. I make you guys participate. So just bear with me. Okay. So what does that, if you, when you read that, that Gary Keller said, what does that mean to you? To me, it kind of just boils down to having a plan. Okay, exactly. Um, that basically what it is, you know, have a plan, you know, to go forward, you know, always have your lead gen conversations the day before um, and be ready and be re focused and ready to perform. A very good answer, my man. Very good answer. 
Okay, you guys have seen this before. Those that have been in Ignite before, um, who remembers what this model is called, guys? Anybody remember? That? Has anybody seen this before? Let me ask it first. Has anybody seen this before? I have seen it before. Do you remember what it's called? I can't write it this second. It's actually just, it's called a database, lead generation, a database model. Okay. Long story short, if you look at the, look at the, the diagram, you got leads and contacts, your database up top and prepare contacts for conversation. So basically you want to get everybody you speak to that's a contact or a lead, or that's a lead in your, which is in your funnel, your sphere, get it to the bottom of the sphere, prepare contacts for conversation. Okay. How do you define Let's, let's go a little deeper. How do you define the difference between a lead and a contact? What's the difference? What's the main difference? A lead is someone that you have actually already uh, either done a transaction for or maybe you've sold something for them before or listed something. Uh, contact would be, I guess, where you would just those are people that you intend to contact or they're there if you know if they need you they know you're okay, there okay let's go okay okay i see where you're going with that let's go a little deeper to that so leads are people you you have contact information for and you have a way to follow up with them okay that's your lead so basically mm -hmm. i send you uh mary joe and you don't know her but you have a way of getting in touch with her okay so that's going to be your lead it's up to you to make that lead a contact um, contacts are people who you know, and you know you can have reciprocal conversations with. These people who expect to hear from you, they know who you are and that you're an agent and you can help them with their estate real estate needs. Um, now, what's the main difference between contact? What makes the difference between contacts and leads important? What's the difference there? How do you, what makes that, that, that stereotype, what makes it different? What makes it most important to know which one's which? If you talk to someone like they're a contact and they're actually a lead, what can you do in that conversation? What's the worst thing that happen right there? You're not keep you know, following up. You're not keeping on it. Well, you know, if I speak to someone like I've known them forever and I don't, they may think I'm some kind of freak, you know, um, <laughs> if I act like I've known these guys for a long time and start talking about their kids they are thinking, OK, how do you know my kids? Um, so it's basically just building that relationship between the lead and the contact to where they feel comfortable talking to you about everyday things, um, about what's going on in their life, about what happened to church Sunday, about, you know, what their what their teenagers doing, you know, behind closed doors. When they feel comfortable talking to you, it becomes a contact then. Then you can have two-way conversations back and forth. Does that make sense, guys? Uh-huh. All right. So definitely you want to get that from a lead to the bottom of the barrel of this, of this formula right here. It makes it be actually, it'll make your life, job a lot easier once you realize they're a lead or a contact. Your contacts you can talk to on an everyday basis. You can have conversations with. They know about you, who you are, what you do, and what you can do for them, okay? So it breaks it down. It says, all right, with a lead, we have a person's name and a way to contact them. With a contact, we know about because we have reciprocal communications. This is how uh, they explain it on Ignite. We might know if they are first-time home buyers or real estate investors. We may know where they work and how, how far they are willing to commute. We can use what we know about our contacts real estate desires to tailor our message. All right, remember guys, in the WI42Cs, the third W is communication, which means to seek first to understand if we have approached a conversation with contacts, with the maximum of mind, we understand their needs and can communicate with our contacts based on those needs. All that makes sense, guys? Uh-huh. Okay. And again, if you have any questions, please step in and say, hey, I got a question, and we'll all address it, okay? Focus on building relationships and take market share. We all intend to be successful as a real estate professional. Success is built on relationships. As one of the top agents said, 
for the stage of the Red Talk, focus on building relationships and take market share. What does that mean to you guys? What, 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 what do you take away from that? This one says dollar bills to me. This one says dollar bills to me. Focus on building the relationships, the transactions happen, and take some of that money home. Is that what you guys get? Exactly. You know, it's all about that dollar bill. Now, again, me personally, sorry, guys. It is about the dollar bill. That is that, that is everybody's, ultimately, their big whys to generational wealth, to provide for the family, to uh, get leverage in life, and to, you know, produce options. You know, wealth produces options. So this basically just says, worked hard. And uh, the rewards will pay off. You'll get paid in the end. Okay. So keep that in mind. Today's conversation is tomorrow's transactions. Let's establish a mindset around follow up with our contacts. If your database is a garden, then your leads are the seeds, your contact plants are the conversation, is your harvest. What do you think about the expression on the slide? Today's conversation is tomorrow's transaction. And how does it affect your mindset? You me too, guys. How does this affect your mindset? Well, the payoff isn't immediate. Yeah. I'm sorry, to... one more time. Go ahead, Alan. No, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to talk over you. I, I was just going to say, to me, it goes back to what we talked about earlier about staying top of mind. Mm -hmm. You know, in real estate, it is a race. It's not a sprint. It is a marathon. Um, the conversations that we have today, you know, will help out tomorrow. Tomorrow's conversations help out Wednesdays. Wednesdays help out Thursdays and so on and so on. It's not about who gets there the first, okay? It's who has a marathon and has the conversations every single day to win the race at the end, okay? So today when you talk to someone, whether it be someone at your church, um, at the grocery store, it can affect tomorrow's outcome. So make sure that every conversation is about um, truth. Uh, about, you know, what you can do and what services you can offer, okay? So keep that open. But again, everybody you talk to today could be a transaction tomorrow. Keep that in mind. Right. How do you make sure that you will have a large enough harvest in your database to fund your big life? What's some things that we can do on a daily basis, guys? to make that harvest big enough to fund what we're looking for as our big why and our big life. Give me some examples. What can we do on a daily basis? So we already talked about talking to people in the grocery store. What else can we do? So some people like social media. Okay. What else? Social media is great. It's easy. It's free marketing, guys. What else? Mm -hmm. They always encouraged us to do personal notes, but that takes a lot of time, but um, it is a good way to stay in contact with people. And a lot of times you may get a referral from that as well. I tell you, personal notes are a very important thing. And I, so real quick story, guys, um, I will those Jonathan Sweat, um, one of my mentors, amazing guy, learned a lot from. And uh, one of the most important things I've gotten from him personally um, is those handwritten notes. And, you know, over my last couple of careers, I've, I remember look, getting Christmas cards from, from some vendors or some of my clients and customers. And that personal touch was that signature at the end. When someone takes the time to write a handwritten note with a signature, they know that you that that very moment you were they were on your mind and they feel important and they are important. So I challenge you guys do the handwritten notes. I know it takes a little bit of time, but it's a very cheap and easy way to get people out there to realize you're thinking about them and that you're they're thankful for them. So uh, hand personal notes, guys, every single day. Again, make it part of your regiment. Um, you're talking 20 minutes a day tops, if that. You know, by the time you have your 10 that you're going to make out that day, make them out, 
Um, when you talk to them on the phone, write their name down, send them a card. It means so much, guys. All right. So definitely take the time to do that. And it's the little things, guys, the little things that nobody else is doing, we're doing. So what else? Give me one more thing. What else can we do to make sure our harvest is larger? Talk to one more thing. All right, I'm going to throw one at you. Farming, find the neighborhood, send out postcards, send out something. Use uh, use what command's given you and, you know, find your 150 houses you want to send postcards to. Then follow up. Again, I think I did one, cost me 100 bucks, but I've had three phone calls. And again, one transaction definitely makes up for those 100 bucks I spent. So use use the farming tools that's in, that's in command, guys. That's what they're for. All right, Alan, do me a favor, read this for me, please. Uh, what, let me. I got some of the thumbnails in the way. Here we go. <laughs> uh, once you meet your new contacts, you either do business with them immediately or you don't. Either way, once you've met them, you put them in your database and stay in touch with them forever. Okay. All right, Alan. Let's break down the first portion of that. Once you meet your new contacts, whether they do business or not, does that still make them a contact? Um, well, based on your definition, I, I guess when I since I've just met them, I think of them more as a lead, but yes. Well, okay, that's 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 that's, that's fair. Um. Let's say we talk for a little bit. We, you know, we're, we're at the bar, we have a drink, we're talking and real estate comes up. They're not willing to do business today, but they say, well, you know, I thought about, you know, I wanted to find a country home out there in Bedford County. So again, they're not been doing business today and they become a contact now. Oh yes. That's somebody you want to stay in touch with. Absolutely. And that's why it's important to put every person we meet into our database. Because we're human, guys. We forget things, and there's a lot of things that may pass us by. If we set up smart plans, they're being touched. They're being touched. They're being reminded. Um, and then when they do get that phone call from you, like, well, yeah, I just got your email last week. Thanks for thanks for following up. So even though they're not doing business today, they're going to be doing business. Another story real quick. So I had a, and I tell you, especially first-time home buyers. Um, I have a client that I'm working with currently. and. Uh, She's just been qualified for her first time to buy a house. And within two weeks, she gave me five people to uh, to reach out to and two more actually getting pre-approved. So my point is, even though they're not doing business today, they're talking to people today. And if you make them feel comfortable and you can show value to what you're bringing to the table, it's contagious. These guys are going to talk to the people at the grocery store. I kid you not, it's Amy. She's uh, I've known her for a long time. Great girl. But she literally sent me five leads out of nowhere. And all she was doing was talking about how excited she was about her, but you know, getting becoming a first time home buyer. So again, talk to everybody, put them in your put them in your database. You never know what that's going to grow. Again, five leads from one contact, that's pretty good. So you never know what they're going to do for you. Does that make sense, guys? Yes. All right. So the second C in the WI42Cs is in action is commitment in all things. We are committed to staying emotional proximity with our contacts. So again, we're going to stay close to our contacts. We're going to know what's going on in their life. We're going to know how their kids are doing. Um, you've got to be that person that's, that's paying attention, you know, and it basically it boils down to being human, you know, caring about what's going on around you. Um, I'm not saying no one doesn't care, but Always show you're caring to this person. Let them know that you're thinking about them. Let them know that, you know, you do care how their children are doing. Make it make it an emotional relationship, not just a, a business relationship. Does that make sense, guys? Yes. All right. Any questions on that? Okay. I apologize, but I'm going to have to leave the meeting shortly. 
That's okay. Well, thanks for coming in for a little bit. And again, this will be on Zoom if you'd like to catch back up. And if you have any questions, if I can ever be of any help, uh, definitely you know, link up, catch me on Facebook. I'm at the office quite a bit. Get my phone number and I'll, I'm always there if you need anything, okay? Okay. Thank you. You're very welcome. All right. So in order to be successful at nurturing relationships, we must understand our goals. Pretty important, guys. Um, is anybody using the success plan currently in their in their everyday business in terms of conversations and handwritten and social media? Are we using that stuff currently or is this kind of all new to everybody? It's all new to me. I'm still trying to figure out how to get my listings on. <laughs> all right. Do you have listings already? Well, I, I brought some over from my other business. And so I'm having to redo all the paperwork and I don't, it's just, it's a learning curve right now, but it'll it, get it better. Is. Absolutely. And I, and I will challenge you, the more you do it, the better it is. Um, command is an amazing tool. Gary Keller and his guys have, have really developed this just for the agents. It's everything that we need to be successful to make our job easier. And we'll get a little deeper into this later, but the amount of touches that we have to do on our clients on a, on a yearly basis, command makes that a breeze. It's all hitting a few keystrokes, changing a few things out. And if you're not familiar with it, I do recommend getting with Faye. She is a, a rock star. Um, she's a blessing to Keller Williams here in Roanoke, and she will teach you so much. Um, so definitely get with Faye. So take a look at the graph and compare it to the wave where every person in your database is on the wave of being ready to buy. In this graph, we have the lead generation phase on the left where you are gathering and storing leads rather quickly. In fact, you can generate leads in days or weeks. On the right end of the graph, you will you are busy with transactions and other things with that process, which can last two weeks, two months, unfortunately, sometimes longer. Um, so how... Uh, how long is the lead follow-up phase? I guess this is going to be for, for you that's been in business for a little longer. Um, do you recall how many years it is between buying homes on an average? My question is, how, how often are families buying homes? What's that, what's that, what's that, what's that year right now? I'm going to get it. Ten. It's seven to ten years. It can be seven to ten years. Um so that being said, you know, you're having to nurture these clients and, and leads and contact or contacts quite a long time. Again, seven to 10, that's, that's a big, it's a long turnaround. So you're having to stay in their life for a long time. But in the meantime, they're going to be giving you referrals and, and find another business for you. And you're building that relationship. So when it is time to buy and sell, you're the first person they call. Uh, lead follow-up plus lead conversation is the path to a signed contract and transaction. Of course, leads who express an immediate interest in your service are more likely to be ready to convert an appointment right away. These are called golden leads. Golden leads are great, guys, but I'll, I'll tell you, we don't get them very often. At least I personally don't. I've had a couple here and there, but for the most part, you're having to build and make this thing to what it actually is. A lot of times clients and, and even friends and family, they don't realize they're ready. They, they're trying to talk themselves out of it. So with our follow-ups and our conversations, you know, we kind of make them realize that it's not a big deal as they think it is, and it can be made simple by using someone like us, um, by the, the service we provide. So these conversations are important. They have to be had. And again, once you sell someone a house, don't walk away from them because another seven to 10 years, they're going to do it again. Any questions with that, guys? No, sure. All right. Does that all make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Identify the goals, convert contacts to close business. So our goal for session 11 was to convert leads to appointments. And we've learned that not all leads, not all, not every lead is available. Um, ready for willing to, to meet. When you encounter folks who are not ready for an appointment, we use a follow-up, stay in contact until they are ready for an appointment. If you had, question guys, if you had to guess, how many times have you agreed 
to be in someone's database when you were not ready to make a purchase. Include the times that you signed up for emails. For example, I know my my email is full of it. Um, sign up here for a free coupon. You know, Harley Davidson is offering twenty percent off of this if you sign up for this. How many times have you guys signed up for stuff like that over the years? Quite a bit. Several. And I'm sure your email is 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 just flooded away with spam and stuff it's talking to you about because at one time you were you were interested right is that right so at one time you showed interest right right all right so when you put stuff on social media and stuff like that, that's questions about, you know, about the market, about if you could offer a CMA or you can offer a analysis or interest rates. That's all things that's going to generate some kind of a conversation. And if they're answering at that very minute, they're, they're, they're actually considering business, even though they may not be ready at that point in time. They're thinking about it at that very minute. So, I, I, I you know, I challenge you, put things out there that makes them makes them wonder, are they ready? Are they going to be ready? When are they going to be ready? And it, you know we can we can nurture that into a transaction. So people may not be excited to, to move and buy today, but if you can get them talking on your social media or even conversation out about, you're making that those wheels turn. They're thinking about what they can do, or maybe maybe they are ready. Maybe they do want that new house, that big backyard, and that new garage. Okay, always be working, guys. What's up, Norm? How are you, buddy? Any questions so far, guys? Good seeing you. Thanks again for Friday, man. We look forward to many more. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, guys. Let's look at this, this slide real quick. Um, get back here. Sorry, guys. All right. So we've talked about Mindshare before and how important it is to converting leads into contacts and contacts into appointments. Take a look at these stats. This is on the on a, in a, in the NAR stats that 74 to 79 percent of all buyers and sellers spoke with just one agent before choosing them to represent them. And only 15 of them, percent of them even consider more than one agent. So what's that saying to you guys? What's what's these numbers say to you? What's very important in this slide? Being the first one they think about. That's a good one. What else? One more. There's one more important one there. What else? First impressions. First impression, guys that you need to be at top of their mind. So when buyers and sellers think of real estate, they think of you, that the definition of mind, that's the definition of mind share. Do you remember the earlier conversations and discussions of how many real estate database each of you leads or contacts are in? For example, I bet you I'm in 40 or 50 databases when it comes to uh, real estate because We've had conversations. I've showed interest on emails. I've talked on social media. So even though I'm a real estate agent, I am still a bunch. I'm a, I'm a part of a bunch of different databases. So I've got to be in their face all the time. I've got to be that contact they think about. I, when they think of me, think of real estate, think of my family, the pictures they've seen, the Facebook post. Um, you've got to make yourself wanted. Um, so again, I think it's, I believe it's every 11 days I read that people forget that you're in real estate. Every 11 days. So think about that. Every 10 or 11 days, you've got to be in that person's somehow reminding you that you're in real estate. If not, they're going to forget about you. So be Johnny on the spot. Be that person that's in their face. And don't give them an option. When they think of selling a house, make them trust you. Make sure that they're coming to you for all their needs. Um, Let's see. Uh, so nurturing relationships, you know, dropping off donuts, phone calls, text, those handwritten letters, those are going to be the deciding factors that make you either the first person they think about or if they're going on to someone else. OK, so be different. Make it simple, but be different. Does that make sense, guys?
It does. Okay. Um, all right. Identifying the goals. Hey, Jennifer, you wouldn't mind reading those, please? There's this, this couple bullet points. Sure. <clears throat> Number one, convert contacts to close business. Two, remain top of mind. And three, leverage mind share for referral business. Our clients never stop being contacts. We continue to nurture our relationships with them after the transaction to remain in emotional proximity to help them share our value propositions. May I ask you, how many of your friends... How many have you have asked a friend who go when they're looking for, when you're looking for a new doctor, a new mechanic, um, a new Harley dealer, or whatever your hobbies or whatever you're looking for is important. Why do you go to a friend or family to ask for their recommendation before just going to a Google and pulling the first person up? Why do you, why do you ask for those recommendations? Why do, why, what's, what's some, some key notes there? You trust them. You know, they're, knowledge on whatever your their amount of knowledge on motorcycles or whatever you're looking for for important purchases or service of goods it's a natural to seek personal recommendations your contacts especially the ones who have bought or sold from you are such a great lead source if you're at the top of their mind because you follow up and give amazing customer service they will think of you first when someone asks a real estate question in fact, in the NR in, in 2021, 47% of buyers who used an agent were referred to them by friend, neighbor, or relative, that the number jumps to 57 for the first time home buyers. You should make sure you're that recommendation, guys. Again, it's just making yourself out there, making making yourself uncomfortable, being comfortable, being uncomfortable, um, have conversations. And again, it's just about being human, guys. You see people every single day at the grocery stores, at the at the convenience stores, the car wash. It doesn't have to be about business at that point in time. You can get there. But just, you know, smile at someone, give them your card, shake someone's hand, open a door for someone, buy lunch for someone. It's the little things, guys. It's going to make you that much different than everybody else, okay? I hope that that sinks in. You don't have to be a superstar agent to be super busy. You can be a great human being and a mediocre agent that does their follow-up and holds up accountable and be very successful. Does that make sense, guys? Is that, does that actually make sense to you guys? It does. Okay. Any questions on that? Again, I'm going through it kind of quickly, guys. If you have any questions, please just say, excuse me or whatever. Just let me know, okay? All right. Any ahas? from that section guys what's something you took away from that give me give me two things and these are for those who don't know what uh, we all share ahas because they are powerful and meaning meaningful insights that come from reflection on the experiences we are having when we share them out loud we further strengthen the power of the aha and we can help fellow participants to have powerful ahas as well so give me each of you guys, give me one thing you took from that first section. What's something's gonna you're gonna either implement or made your mind kind of spin a little bit? Give me give me something a piece, guys. Well, Greg, was, I'm sorry, go ahead. That just people can forget you're an agent in just 11 days. So you have to keep on like here I am, here I am. Yep. Yeah, that's a good one too. I didn't, didn't realize that either. And the other one, I think, I think we always know the importance of first impressions and we've heard, I've heard through this course and I'm brand new. I'm still waiting on my license to come through, but okay, uh, listening, you know, you, top of mind, top of mind, top of mind. If you're not one of their first two that they think of, then you're not going to get their business. But I exactly. hadn't noticed on that particular slide that today it shows that they a majority of the time will only interview one agent. I've never seen that word interview put with it. So, you know, 75% of the time they're only interviewing one. So that first impression matters. Exactly. And again, it's going to be up to you when they interview that second person. If you go in there and you knock their socks off and you show them value and that you truly care, it's not about a transaction, it's about a relationship. You've won the business. Again, it's about falling back to being human. 
and caring for one another. Again, we all want to make a dollar, but that's not even important when you're first talking to a client, especially during an interview. Um, let them let your guard down. You know, let them know that you know you're you're very personable. Um, talk about your children. Or talk about your animals. Let them realize you're human. And I tell you guys, on my social media, I do have a business page. Ninety eight percent of my stuff I do, I have to do on my personal page because that's what people are going to know is me. You know, I'm a, I'm a father of eight. Uh, yes, I said eight. Um, you know, my, 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 all my people on social know that. I it makes us different at Kelly Williams. Okay. Sorry, and I know but my still computer still... stopped for a minute when said father of eight. I think it got scared. Did, uh, did, did the computer stop? Did you, my did your wife mouth hit, hit went off the Yeah, yeah. I, I lost you too. The last thing I heard was the father of eight. <laughs> can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? I'm trying to get to a different spot. My house. Yeah, I can. Yeah, so yeah, father of eight, guys. My kids go from the age of six to 29. I got two grandbabies and another, another grandson due in August. Wow. Um, real quick story the ones that you don't know me yet so uh i i my family is the most important thing in my life besides my god my faith um but so my wife and i've been together for 18 years um lord knows she's put up a lot and god bless her so uh she told me when i when i came to the table i had three kids I had custody of she had two and at dinner one night she said she wanted to have 10 kids i thought she was kidding she was not kidding. Oh, goodness. This is making me nuts. And even though I love my babies, you know, it's enough's enough. But yes, yeah, so, and all my clients know that I have eight kids because I'm, I'm vocal about that. You know, I, I share my family experiences with my, with my, with my contacts. So again, be be the first one there. Um, if they show it on Facebook, message them, call them, get in front of them. Because I, a little his story, I thought I had a done deal with one of the good friends of mine. Great friend of mine I've known for 20 plus years. Yes, we're still friends. Um, and I had went to his house, had given him an estimate on, on selling his house. Thought it was a done deal. You know, he told me he'd call me back in a week or so. And I made a mistake. I didn't follow back up and I look on Facebook and I notice his house is, is listed with one of our competitors. And the reason was, is I had gotten in front of him, but I hadn't got in front of his wife. His wife was a decision maker. So again, just because you're speaking to half the family, the boss may be, not be there. And I realized mm -hmm. the boss was not there and that was a tough conversation that he had to have with me because, you know, we had shook hands as far I'm an old school, you know, a handshake means a lot to me, but I always get that buyer agreement signed. When you start talking real estate, get that buyer or listing agreement signed. Lesson learned. So guys, okay. you got to be in front of them. You got to be in front of the right person. You got to be in front of the entire decision team. Don't let them forget you're in real estate. And uh, it's that simple, guys. Be the person they think when they think of real estate, make them think of you. We're going to move on, guys. All right. You already know how important lead follow-up is and how you can use the 19 to connect to connect and one to cement plans. Now, a lot of this is going to be new, guys. You probably haven't heard this before. You'll learn a lot of this later on, and we'll go over a couple things. But uh, sorry, my phone is going crazy this morning. Mm -hmm. um, let's, let's talk about how you can use the 36 convert plan to stay in contact long-term and gain benefit and referrals from your database. Okay, so devise a plan. All right, so a lot of you guys have probably haven't done this yet. The 19 and 36 touches. Y'all have y'all seen this before? I've seen it before, yes. Okay. Another ignites. So, okay. So I, I won't touch a lot on this because this is going to be a lot of your off record in terms of getting with the with the Faye and setting up your smart plans and getting into command 
but basically, you, you know, this is how many touches you should touch your database every single year. Okay. You would, and again, um, the, the command will actually do a lot of this for you. You can set up smart plans to where you're there being touched by monthly and you got Twilio. There's all kinds of different things you can do this while, but so using the six connection questions, include a mofer and make an offer immediate. <clears throat> So for the 36 touches should do two things. One, build our connection with our contact by getting to know their needs and wants. And two, elicit a response for the contact that puts you in a dialogue with them as quickly as possible. We call messages that do that in a ladder as a mofer, as a make offer for immediate response. Now, here's the questions, guys. Think about these questions, okay? It's the six questions. Who are they? What do they want or need to do? Where do they want to need? Where do they want to need or need to be? Why do they want to? Why do they want or need to do it? When do they want or need to do it? And how do they plan for this? So a most for basically is something you're going to put out there that generates a response, whether it be a direct or indirect response. Um, in real estate, what's do we want more direct or indirect responses? Does, does everybody know what an indirect response is or direct response is? Explain the difference, guys. All right, Jennifer, if I ask you, are you ready to move? What's your answer going to be? Most likely going to be? No. Okay. <laughs> right. So that's a direct that's answer. That's a direct right? response. And that, but that, indirect that, that, would that, be that, like, well, in a couple of years, maybe, or maybe when my kids go to college. Right. Or I could word it like this and say, so Jennifer, you know, I know your kids are grown now. Um, when are you looking to move? See how I changed that up? Same question. Right. Same question, but it, it it makes you think outside the box to where, wait a minute, you know, <laughs> empty nest, kids are right. gone, you know, mama wants that big jacuzzi on the toe, on, mm -hmm. on the back deck, you know, so it makes that, makes you, and again, it makes me as an agent realize, okay, she's not shutting me down, there is a chance, and then it's going to get into conversations to where, you know, I thought about moving to Bedford County, you know, I like to have a couple acres, I've always wanted a goat, you know, <laughs> and again, it makes me think about what I can do for you, the services I can offer at that point in time. So use these questions, guys, and they will give you answers and, and, and text that you can use in later conversations. It may not be today's conversation. Jennifer, you may say, you know, I, at this point in time, I hadn't thought about it, but in the next six to eight months, you know, I'd, I'd be interested in maybe looking at some properties. And at that point in time, I'll say, well, you know, in six to eight months, I'll get you my lender. Let's get you out there looking. Um, but in the meantime, I'm going to be talking to you on a weekly or bi-weekly basis about that one conversation. Now, it may not all be about real estate, but in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, okay, she said six to eight months. She's now my, oh, she's one of my B buyers, you know? So two months goes by, three months goes by on month four, you're with my lender because we're going to have you in there in the next four to 35 days. Okay. So again, that one question triggered everything instead of me just saying, Hey, Jennifer, are you ready to move? No. <laughs> got nothing. I got nothing from it. Right. So keep that in mind, guys. It's important that the way you word your questions is going to give you the answers you're looking for. It may not be the answers you want at that point in time, because not everybody's going to be like, okay, here's my pen. I'm ready to buy today. But it's going to give you a timeline to put it in that A, B, or C category. Speaking of that, does everybody know what the A, B, and C category is in terms of buyers? Yeah. All right. So this is how I work it. Um, a, a buyer is someone that's ready to buy that. They, they have a pen on their forehead. They're ready to sign the dotted line. Okay. A B buyer may be 60 to 90 days. All right. Or 120 days, however you want to do that. And a C buyer is one of those ones that Jennifer was just saying, she wants to buy a goat in Bedford in six to eight months. Okay. So categorize those. Your A buyers, your B buyers, your C buyers. Um, and it'll tell you, you know, what kind of, uh, push you need to do for each one. It'll kind of give you a, a feeling of how they want to be, okay? All right. Develop your 36 touch plan. All right, guys, let's go through this real quick. All right. So give me some more examples of some MOFR questions that we could use, okay? So what's some more questions? What's something you could put on social media? to trigger some responses 
or or a text that, that you send out. Give me something that can trigger some responses that's not a yes and no answer. I want two examples, guys. I'm not moving until we get it. I'm going to sit and kick my feet until we do. A leading question, would it be like posting, don't you love lake life or something like that? Or I like it. I like it. Okay. You know, uh, my dream home is going to be on the water. What's your mm -hmm. dream home? That's out, yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> Um, you know, I, I just sold a house at the lake last week. You know, I know you live close by. Do you know what your house is worth? Let's get to, do you want to know how much your house is worth? The CMAs, estimates. Um, you know, here comes summertime. Just had my air condition service for the summer. Now, are you looking for someone to do yours? It's simple things like that that generate conversation that gets in the answer. Well, you know, I, my AC, I replaced my AC last year. I was doing it because I wanted to sell my house. Trigger. Right. They just got my attention. <laughs> they said the word house, you know? So, <laughs> all right. So develop your 36 plan. Um, let's see. Let's go past this one. So goal setting. So right now, the big thing is having 200, I think it's 201 contacts in your database okay so let's do some quick math all right if we're going to touch each one of our database contacts 36 times in one year all right and we have 200 in our database do the math how many touches that in a year time so we have 200 in our database and you want to touch them 36 times in that one year how many touches is that Was that 7,200? 7,200, that's correct. Now, that may feel exciting for some of you, or some of you are like, <laughs> oh, my gosh, that's a lot of touches, okay? It can be overwhelming. Both responses are great. The one thing that Gary Keller says, and Jay Papathan explains, that we need a big white and to think big. Uh, they also share that the way we get there is to break down our, break down our someday goals into smaller goals, and smaller goals until we get to a daily goal. And right now, a, the goal is, and right now, a goal. They call this goal setting to the now. So basically, yes, we have 7,200 contacts that we have to touch this year, okay? That's a lot of phone calls. You're going to have arthritis in every finger you have when you're using on the phone. Use the smart plans. Use command. These things are set to do it automatically for you. And I will tell you guys, I'm blessed that I have somebody that does this on my team. I do not, I am not your guy for that, but I can get you in front of someone who can. Faye is going to be your rock star uh, person that can set this up for you. She's going to take time. Use her knowledge, guys. I, I, I can tell you, I have clients that reach out to me that I didn't realize I reached out to. <laughs> I'm that good. Um, I'm reaching <laughs> out to people that had no idea because Paige sits on our team and she does this for us and she does one heck of a job. I have agents that, to me that, the clients talk to us all the time because they received our postcards. They received our email. They were invited to a, 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 a gathering or a, a customer appreciation. I don't do that stuff. Command us. So get with get with facilitator, but command do that work for you. Those touches can be made a lot easier. Now, that don't mean you don't need to be on that phone every single day. Um, and you can break that down on a daily basis, how many you have to get done every single day. And I don't mean making calls. I mean making conversations, actually talking to them on a daily. When you when down a voicemail, and they don't respond to your text, that don't count. Okay, so make sure you, you hold yourself accountable with that. To stay motivated to keep up with your touches, remember that every touch is getting closer to your someday goal that feeds your big why. Those seventy two hundred touches are how you are going to get to your someday goal. Does that make sense, guys? I know it's a big number. Does it make sense how we get there and how important it is to get there? Sorry, guy. I have to drink my water. I apologize. All right. Planning your touches. All right. So everybody grab a piece of paper real quick, if you would. Or a calculator, however you want to do it. 
we have the one year goal and we know we need to break it down into by month by month, week by week and day by day to be able to set a goal to that. So let's just use an easy number. All right. We have 200 people in our in our pipeline. OK, so you would want to take that 200 and multiply that by four. What's that give us? And that, that number four is the amount of touch they're getting every year, okay? What's that number? Excuse me, 800. All right. Now, we're going to divide that by 12 because we have 12 months in a year, right? And we don't do points, so whatever we're going to, if it's, I think it's 66.6, .6, I believe. So we're going to make it 67. All right, so we're going to, um, Divide that by four because there's four weeks in a month, right? And what does that give us? 267. How many? Oh, I'm sorry, 67. 67 divided by four. Mm -hmm. 17. So 17 people. You know, that's on a weekly basis. You can do that daily. And I recommend doing that daily. But we're going to up the ante a little bit. Instead of doing a 17, let's do 20. 20 calls a day. 20 conversations a day. And this falls back to the accountability. One of my biggest words of 2023 is accountability. I'm holding myself accountable. I'm holding my, my vendors accountable. I'm holding my wife accountable. Okay, don't tell her I said that. Um, I'm holding my children accountable. But it all falls back to accountability, guys. If you hold yourself accountable, you have no one to blame but yourself. Okay. It's up to you whether we succeed or we'll say win or learn. We don't lose either way. We win or learn every day. Every single day we get better or worse. There's no staying the same. If we're holding ourselves accountable, then we know we're doing our job to our best ability. Okay. So if it's 17, make it 20 and hold yourself to that. Do not get off that phone in front of that laptop until you get that last conversation in for the day. Trust me. Because if, if, if you're like me, if I'm too, if I'm lacking too, and I walk away, it's eating at me. It's eating at me because I know that I, I left something on the table that could have been that one call. Okay. Does that all make sense, guys? So make that big 7200 big goal into a daily goal, and you'll see it's achievable every single day. You know, people that run marathons, they didn't run 50, 50 miles the very first time running out there, right? They broke it down. And they set their goals for themselves. You know, I'll never run 50 miles. Not me unless it was chasing me. And even then, I'm probably going to be eating because I'm not running 50 miles. But I've set goals and, you know, a little bit of the time, a mile here, a mile here, a mile here. Make them achievable, but stretch yourself. All right? All right. So um, you can use smart plans in Twilio and Command to make their touch plans consistent and less time intense, intensive. You can find uh, links on how to use smart plans, set up your Twilio account. Use Twilio, guys. Are anybody familiar with Twilio? Give me a hands up. Yes, no, maybe. No. Basically, it's it's mass texting. And you're not touching it. It's, you're not sending out text to every single one of your contacts. It's mass but you can answer all these things, these platforms with the smart plans and the Twilio we command all by your phone. You don't miss text. You don't miss responses. Simple, simple, simple. Keep it simple. Okay. Get with Faye. Let her set these up. And once they're set up, guys, they keep going. All right. You can walk away. You can know that you've done your job. The business is taking care of itself. You can meet new people every single day. All right. Do you say Twilio is integrated with command? Yes, it is. All right. Um, get with Faye, and she will set that up. I know for a fact, everybody knows Frazier. Everybody, everybody met Frazier from our team? Sure. Frazier uses this, and I learned it from him, and it is an amazing tool. It really, you will reach people, and again, you'll start getting texts back, and oh, you, you did it one time, and you can touch everybody in your database. Super simple. But yeah, get with Faye on that, and she will help set that up, all right? Any questions, ahas? What did you, what did y'all take from that section?
what's something you guys are, are going to implement starting today on something on what you learned? You got to stay on top of mind. You got to create a good first impression and you got to stay in contact with them. Good. What's some technology you guys are going to look into to, to, to grow your business that we talked about? Command. Command is huge. And again, you know, I will tell you, a lot of people don't use command to the capabilities. And I may be one of them. I definitely, again, I learn every single day on it. There's a lot of things I don't do in command that I need to do. Um, and I tell you, again, part of because I've been blessed to where my team handles a lot of that for me. And so I am this year making it upon myself to learn more about command and not depending on someone else because, again, blessed, not taking it for granted. But I want to learn it. You know, there's some things that I want to set up and do myself. Um, you know, so the command classes on YouTube, the ones that Faye teaches, take advantage, guys. Invest in your business. You know, whatever you put in, you're going to get back out times two. And, you know, these classes are not the most fun thing. You know, a lot of times you'd rather be out there meeting clients and meeting new people. This is where it starts, guys. I can put you in front of 100 people. And unless you know what you're doing once you get there, you're being a, a gesture for 100 people. Learn, learn, your, learn your trade, learn the tools around you, and take advantage of them. That's what Gary Keller tells us to do on a daily basis. Use the tools they've developed. They're there for us. They're not for anybody else but us. And, you know, people that have been at other places will tell you command is a huge asset and a wonderful resource. Take advantage of it. Learn it. Make it part of your daily to learn something new every day with command. Okay. I challenge you. Anything else, guys, on that one? All right. Did you guys need to take a break or anything? Or are you guys good to go and run, run through it? Or are you guys need a break? It's up to you guys. I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. All right, Jennifer, if you wouldn't mind, read the first part. How, how has your thinking changed? Read the first part of this, please. Uh, how has your thinking changed? What ideas and mindsets are new? Keep going. Okay. All right. Yeah. Go to the next one, please. How do you feel different? What do you feel differently about what was meaningful to you today? How will your behaviors be different going forward? What actions will you take? What tools, models, or systems will you use? How will they make you accountable? All right. Now, out of all of those, which one's most important to you? I think for me right now, be taking action, you know, just getting started. But I, I mean, I also think that I'm doing my 30 days command every, you know, right now. And that's okay. also very right. helpful. But you, Alan, what's, what's, what, what, what catches your out of, a, out of those four statements? I, uh, I like tools. Um, that last one. Yeah. Um, thank you for mentioning Twilio because that's something I could foresee me using. Um, I like those things that help make those contacts easier. Absolutely. Yeah, the, the tools, models, and systems is my, probably my big one. And the reason being, I'm an accountability person. You know, my wife will tell you, I, I maybe go a little overboard with accountability, maybe a little bit, don't tell nobody. But Again, I've learned that, especially since I've been in real estate, that if I have to have something to hold me accountable besides myself. Now, I do a fair to well job of holding myself accountable, but I have models and people that I speak with on a day, a couple of times a week that uh, are holding me accountable. Um, my mentor, again, one of Jonathan Sweat, him and I talk on, a, on a, every so often, um, my uncle, my pop, he is my biggest accountability partner. He calls me every single day. Um, I mean, what I used to call micromanaging, now I just call accountability manager. And it actually keeps my my focus on, my blinders on. And I, and I challenge you to find you that partner, find you that role, that role play partner, the accountability partner that will hold you accountable. Find you one in the office you can actually practice scripts with on a daily basis, a couple of times a week. Um, find that person that's going to basically say, look, 
Let's straight, let's straighten up. Let's get you back on, on back on, on, on the system that we've been working. Let's trust the system. The system will work, but find you an accountability partner. That's important to me and make it important to you. Okay. Because I tell you, the biggest part of, of real estate is follow up, which actually goes right in hand with what? Accountability. That makes sense, guys. So each day and at night, you grow in how you think, feel, act, and implement what you've learned. From learning the ahas, you move forward towards the achievement of your big life. And that's what we're going, we're, we're here to do, right? So achieve big goals. Um, but yeah, basically, guys, it's just trusting the system, learning the tools and stuff we have to use, implementing the, the, the stuff we have, and holding yourself accountable. Does that all make sense, guys? Yes. All right. All right, we're going to skip this portion right here. Okay. So this part comes back to the success system. All right. Ten conversations. This is on a daily basis, guys. Now, look at these numbers. Okay. These are what you need to do every single day. Life by design. Set up a schedule when you do your lead gen, whether it be two hours, two and a half hours. Um, in today's market right now, I'm lead genning twice a day, three days a week. So I do my normal lead gen. I get up in the morning. I have my quiet time. Um, I do my prayers. I do my, my, my self-gratitude in terms of talking about what I'm grateful for. I work out and then I get into my lead gen, okay? Every single day. This is how I, I do it when I start first thing in the morning. Now, there may be times that I may not like the outcomes I have from the morning that morning. So I'll go back in at five o'clock in the evening and do another hour, hour and a half. Again, life by design, you know, it's always going to be faith, then our then our family, and then our job. All right. Very important to keep it in that way, priority. But if you don't, if you know, in today's market, today's shift, doing lead gen twice a day is not unheard of. There's a lot of agents that are performing right now because they're spending extra time. So 10 conversations, 10 contacts added to your database every single day, 10 handwritten notes every single day, the 10, five, one social media. So it's, it's uh, 10 likes, five answers for responses, con comments, and one, one share or one actual um, post every single day. And instead of making it 10, do 20. All right. It's a, Social media is right in front of you. You can knock out 20 things quickly, all right? And enrichments, what do you think enrichments are, guys? What do you think so that we can do on enrichments that actually will bring value to our business? What do you think that would be? Give me an example. Anything? What if I give you a piece of advice and a hint and saying you're doing it right now? Investing in yourself, knowledge. There you go. Read a book, take a class, take bold, go to ignite, have lunch with a mentor, um, have lunch with an agent and learning from, you know, from a, from a senior agent. Um, that's enrichments. And again, you notice it's on what, 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 what system? A daily system. So always put something in your business new every day, learn something new every day. If we're not, if we're not learning, we're losing guys. All right. Does that make sense? So 10 conversations with your sphere, people you know or who you know, who know you, 10 contacts added to your database, name, phone, address, and more, 10 handwritten notes, express gratitude, or let people know you're into real estate and appreciate referrals. Of course, we talked about the Utilize 1051. Um, you'll be accomplishing many of these goals during the success system. Keep doing these activities outside of class time or time together as well. During the final update time, you may also write notes, engage with social media at times. Well, we're not doing it today, guys. Not, if we had more people on the call, we would do that. So, All right. Is everybody familiar with the do not call list? Y'all familiar yeah. with that? All right. In a nutshell, Jennifer, what does that mean to you? <laughs> Don't call these people. What else does that mean? You can't call me. What else? Text. No, yes, yeah, sorry. That's all right. No. So 
use your market center, talk to your broker, um, subscribe to the registry, Ch always check before you call and update that on a regular basis. They're getting really strict on this. Do not call this, guys. Don't be caught. If there's a question, don't call it. Look it up first. Ask somebody that's been doing it a little longer than you that may have the reports in front of them, but do not be that person, okay? I repeat, do not be that person. All right, Alan, if you wouldn't mind, please reading this. I engage every conversation in the spirit of contribution, and people are happy to be in relationship with me. Okay. Words of affirmation, being nice to one another, okay? Being, being polite. Um, if I say, Alan, you know, man, it's so good seeing you. Man, I like your shoes. You may talk back to me, right? And if I say, man, Alan, you know, those shoes are hideous. You may not talk to me. Be nice to one another. Again, real estate is being human, guys. What can you bring to the table with service? But, you know, a lot of times they just need to pick them up. The conversation you have with them, maybe what brightens their day, brightens their week. Everybody around them, they got better because they're having a better day. I can tell you, if my wife's having a, a rough, a challenging day, it challenges everyone around her, right? <laughs> That's just the way human like that. But if I come in the house, even though I've had a rough day and say, baby, you know, the house looks amazing. Man, dinner smells good. Even though my day was bad. I made her day better, which makes the children's day better, which makes who that she has contact with day better. It's dominoes, guys. It's about being human, being good to one another, and taking care of each other. That makes sense. All right. Again, it's <laughs> real estate is not rocket science. It's about keeping things simple. In my in my now, some may say it's it's more than what I'm saying. But I can tell you what's worked for me. And what's worked for me is being good to people, taking care of people, being honest. And again, I make it a point every single day to at least make someone smile that I don't know. Opening doors, you know, um, paying it forward in terms of paying for someone's meal. It doesn't have to be nothing huge, guys. You'd be surprised by just putting someone's grocery cart back up for them at the grocery store. You're going back inside anyway. Little things. I challenge you. Do that daily. All right. All right, so prepare your conversation list, all right? So the night before, what I do is, I, you know, I'll have whether I'm doing the A's and C's or last names, D's and F's. I'm getting that list in front of me, all right? And the ones that are on that list, I'm going to have conversation pieces written down on a, on a side note in my phone, on my iPad. Um, don't go, you know, we don't go into Super Bowls or into championship football games never practicing right? Practice your scripts, practice your role play, um, know what you're going to say before you get on the phone. Now, again, that, that conversation, if you're lucky, is going to take a complete 180 and you guys are going to start talking about everything else. That's what you want. Reciprocal conversation, guys, but have a baseline, you know, have that script ready in case you need it. Practice that script. Me personally, I do it in, 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 every morning. I'll talk to myself. And that sounds funny, but seriously, find you a mirror. Talk to that mirror. When you're on the phone with somebody, put that mirror in front of you because I can tell when you're smiling when you're talking to, them, right? You know, make that conversation a pleasant one. Um, and again, people on the other end will know if you're smiling. They'll know how, how your day is going by the way you talk to them. Get that list ready every single day. Don't go in blind. Again, nobody wants to go by not practice. We practice what we preach, right? We practice our skills every single day. The more we practice, the better we get. Like I said before, we get better or worse every day. There's no staying the same. 1% better every single day. Practice, okay? So prepare. When you determine who, you're, who you connect with today, before you begin, you will either write names on a conversation sheet or generate a list from your database or contacts. Take action. When you connect with people through conversation, this is your most valuable activity. Building relationships with people in your database and takes up most of your lead gen time. Maintain. When you update contacts in your database, you will enter additional information you've learned from the conversations and follow up on any commitments you made. All right. So does that all make sense, guys? Again, it's preparing. 
being ready and, you know, ready to make that phone call. Don't get caught with, uh, now what do I say? Practice, guys. It'll come more fluent the more you do it, the more you talk. And again, if you're talking to a contact, you know about them anyway. Being friendly, making conversation. If, you know, you haven't talked to them in a while, have that conversation. Throw in a little real estate. You know, you ask, ask those, those questions that's going to give you the information you're looking for, all right? If you want that goat in Bedford, mention that goat in Bedford, all right? Any questions on that, guys? All right. Now, I know you guys are new to the business, all right? But I, we'll, we'll go broad here. Give me some success stories in your real life that you've worked towards and you were able to main, able to gain. Give me some, give me some, both of you guys, give me something you celebrate that you celebrated here recently. Well, I celebrated just passing the PSI test. I was, I hadn't taken a test in a long time. You know, I, I feel your pain on that. And I, so I can, I, I, story time. Um, <laughs> when I took my class, you know, I, I was uh, one of, we'll call it the more of the senior people in the class. Um, mm -hmm. I was there with a bunch of people right out of college. Um, and my study habits were different than them, not because they were smarter than me, because they had more resources. They were showing me things online that I'd never seen before, that taking pre-test and doing this. And they made the comment, they're like, Greg, didn't you have this back when you was in high school? I said, we didn't have internet when I was in high school. <laughs> you know, I didn't have internet. We had just gotten, you know, Lotus Rise making the turtle move and stuff. You know, that was, so again, adapt using tools um, that you, you're given. Command's huge, Twilio's huge. Use the stuff you've been given. Again, teaching an old dog new tricks, so to say we can do it. And again, I'm learning every single day and I, I challenge you to do the same thing, but that's a great win. Congratulations on your uh, passing your test. Um, I know that was huge because I think I cried like a little school kid there when I first passed mine. So congratulations. And again, you're going to do great. You're already investing in your business and you've got a, a huge people behind you that want to see you succeed. And if you have any questions, problems, concerns, we'll be there for you. Okay, Jen? Thank you. What about you, Alan? Give me, give me a success story for you, sir. Again, Nothing real estate related, just in general, okay? I'm going to actually go along with that theme because like you, I'm, I mean, I was with Wells Fargo for over 28 years. So uh, this is a late career change. So yeah, I, I've done a lot of studying in the last six to eight months between that. And I also studied and passed my CDL. And so I'm Good like, for you. Yeah, I can still learn some things. <laughs> You know, and, and we don't give ourselves enough credit. We really don't, guys. I mean, we get settled into a, a normal routine. And I tell you, you know, you will hear the word mindset a thousand times with Keller Williams. And it honestly, God, that is the truth. However you have your mindset is how you're going to perform. Um, again, so a little history about Keller Williams and me. I went to the family reunion last year. Uh, and, and it was in Florida. Did, are you familiar with, with fan reunion? Do you, you know what that is? Have y'all heard of fan reunion? I've heard of it, yes. <clears throat> all right, so basically you get some of the best, the best, the best, the best with Keller Williams that all come together at this once a year and they have breakout sessions and networking events and 10 to 15, 20,000 agents from Keller Williams in one location. So personal goal that I'd set for me, again, um, I am not a small fellow. I've been, I am, I've been a big guy my entire life. Uh, at, the, at my biggest, I was 6'2", 365, okay? Um, this time last year, I was uh, 347 pounds, all right? Um, again, petite fella. And, you know, I wanted to buy some KW swag and uh, buy some of the cool stuff that was that, that was, that was being offered there. Well, I was a little too large to fit into some of these items. I made it a goal to myself and I set my mindset that day that a year from now, I'm going to be able to buy clothes from the, from the red, the red, the, the swag gear for KW. So my mindset was to be healthier, eat right and do the right thing. So this time, what's up buddy? Um, so about a month ago, we was in Anaheim, California. 
We were up there at family union, learned a lot, had some of the great people around us, the best of the best of the best. And that all was important to me. Don't get me wrong. But what's most important to me, when I, when I first got into Anaheim, I went to the red store and I bought nine shirts because I had dropped yeah. 84 pounds in that 12 months. And again, my goals are different than your goals and mindset's different than mine. But my what I'm getting at, guys, you can achieve anything, anything in this world. If you set your mind to it and your mindset is, is right, I can assure you there's not an athlete out there that their mindset was wrong and achieved their goal. It starts here. Get up every morning. Become thankful for what you're what you're blessed with. You know, put the tools to task that's going to make you successful. And mainly, guys, make yourself happy. You know, make yourself positive and open to learning new things. So, again, mindset means everything. Um mm -hmm. Back to the daily success system, guys. Um, let me get past her. Right. Use this as your accountability right now, guys. And again, if you don't find yourself holding yourself accountable, I will. Call me. Let's mm -hmm. do coffee. Let's catch up for lunch. Make conversations over the phone. I will hold you accountable, guys, because someone did the same for me. I want to see both of you guys be successful agents. I want to see you make a lot of money, make a lot of families happy with the services you've offered, and build to this Keller Williams family. I want to see you both, you know, Alan, I know you said you've you, you've been at Wells Fargo for 28 years. Um, I want you to have a career you love, okay? I want to see you enjoy what you do. Jennifer, I want to see you get the house in Bedford with the goats. I want to see okay. you get all that, all right? Hold yourself accountable. Again, if you don't have someone, reach out. Or right, did you say you guys are with Katie now, both of you? Yeah, we are. Okay. I, I'm pretty sure Alan is. Yes, I am. Well, you have a partner that will hold your hand and hold you accountable. Katie is an absolute savage. Yes. Savage. She is uh, now. She, you know, her and I, we we both share a love for Mickey Mouse. I'm a big Disney guy, but in terms of holding you accountable. She will do it. You guys have, and, I, and I've told everybody, the only way you fail at Keller Williams is because you failed. You have people around you that want to lift you up, put you in a place to succeed. If you do fail, it's because you didn't do the work. You didn't trust the process. All right? Trust the process. Hold yourself accountable and grow every single day, guys. And again, if I can give you one piece of advice from an agent that, that was in your spot a, a year ago, all right? If you're the smartest person in a room, find a new room. Surround yourself with people that want to succeed and build generational wealth. You can become a, a great agent by being around a great agents. You will honestly learn so much and take in so much. Again, Jennifer, you said you feel like you're taking things in all directions. Welcome aboard. <laughs> all right. It's going like, to be like it's every single day. And again, there's going to be things you miss. All right. Repetitive, doing it every day, use trusting the process, holding yourself accountable. All that is going to put you in a place to be successful. All right. Yeah. Guys, I think that's all I have pretty much. Um, prepare for your next session. Um, you'll have somebody else coming in and, and, and teaching you guys. It's been my blessing, my pleasure to be a part of your, 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 your mornings today. And do you have any questions for me that I can help you with or anything like that? And give me one more thing. Jennifer, if you had to pinpoint one thing that was important today, all right, what would it be? Like, like I mentioned earlier, I couldn't, you know, you think you put out on Facebook, like, hey, I'm a real estate agent now, remember me, you know, just to, you know, because like now, basically everybody you know, I know everybody personally on Facebook. Now, in two years, that might be different, but just you got to keep out. Hey, hey, remember me? Gotcha. What can I do? What can I do for you? It's a good one. That's a, that's that's probably one of the most important ones to remember today. Those numbers, those numbers don't lie. You know, if if you make a good impression, um, if you're the, the first in front of them, and every ten and a half days you're reminding them, you know, holding your sign around your neck with your name on it, <laughs> make them realize. That you're in real estate, you're here to help them out. You have a lot of value that you bring, and it's you're not just a transactional type of person. You're going to be there from the start to the middle to the end, and you're going to be at their kid's wedding, you know, 12 years from now. That's what we do. It's all about making relationships and not making it transactional. Okay. 
Right. Good takeaway, Jennifer. Thanks again. Um, Alan, what's your one thing you're going to take away from today that you're going to implement starting today? Or you learned today that you didn't realize what was important to you? Um, actually, I'm I'm along with Jennifer, and it's a consistent theme through all these. Um, and it's something, it's just the stay top of mind. I was shocked to yeah. hear that people will forget you're in real estate every 11 days. That, um, you know, and that's the one thing I'm, I feel like I'm learning. I'm not going to convince you to sell your house or to buy a new house. I'm not going to talk you into spending $300,000 or selling your house and moving. Right. But it's more about selling me and being the first person you think of when you do decide to do that. So it's just making sure you're there. You know, be the problem solver. I always bring solutions. Don't bring problems. If they have some on Facebook, and I tell you guys, a lot of times they'll say, hey, look, looking for a plumber. Have that plumber. Have that contractor. Have that mechanic. Have that landscaper. Have the baker, the dog groomer. I can show you my book of business. And I, and I pretty much have something in every category. And if I don't, I'm going to get one. From a locksmith to um, people that sell tires, um, oil changing. You know, I've got people from every walk of life that if they ask me a question on social media or in general, I've got somebody. I'm providing a service. I'm providing value. All right. Again, we anybody can sell a house. But to sell a house and be remembered as that agent that took care of them, they care for them. That's what brings back referrals. OK. Um, both of you have so, you both have Facebook now, right? Greg Alexander, I was a much bigger guy in a pink shirt in front of a big house. Send me a request. I want to see your social media post. I want to see you guys growing, all right? And I'm going to hold you accountable with that. If I don't see your post, I'm going to make you post. <laughs> okay? okay? I'm going to tag you. But both of you guys sent me a friend request today. And again, guys, if I could help with anything, uh, a phone call away. You know, if you want to meet for lunch, if you're looking for an accountability partner that you, that's going to hold you to the, your task, I'm your guy. All right. Thank you Seriously. so much, Greg. Congratulations well, again, too on all your family reunion shares. That's thank awesome. you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> that that means a lot. It really does. Um, I'm very, again, very blessed. You know, I, I threw it on the altar. And um, again, I love, I love my mac and cheese. You know, I love my mashed taters. <laughs> and uh, I learned that my health and again, I've got kids to raise. I got kids I want to see graduating and, and to um and to be married. I want to be there. And if my little bit of uh, sacrifice of that extra portion of taters or putting the alcohol to the side, if I, if I can do that to you know better myself and make my family be a you know want me around, it's right. it's for the right 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 cause. But thank you so much for that saying. That means a lot. And again, guys, I'll close with this. You guys are both rock stars. You showed up today. You're 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 investing in your career, and I applaud you for that. Um, don't stop today. Again, if you want to grow, the options are to grow. All right. You have people around you want to see you grow and succeed. Take advantage of it. You guys stay blessed. And again, catch me on Facebook and email me. Let's get I'll give you my cell phone numbers. I'll be happy to help with everything I can. Okay. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Thanks for coming out. Have a great day, guys. Thank you so much. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you.